What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell on the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio with a pretty amazing dude. His name is Murray Heatery and his bio is incredible. Before we get into his bio, Murray, how are you, brother? Thanks for coming on the show, man. Thanks for having me, Jay. Awesome. Well, it's great to have you. So let me give you guys Murray's um, bio here. He's a multidisciplinary artist and tech pioneer. His purpose-driven approach is at the heart of his business success and acclaim as a visual artist and global recognition as a musician. Very cool. I love musicians. Ever pushing boundaries and guided by a strong desire to help people find their sense of purpose. Murray is now focused on touring his immersive musical experience, which is titled Mind Travel Across the Globe. Over the past five years, Murray has created over 500 mind travel experiences, for over 100,000 people in cities from LA to London, Paris to Pittsburgh. I love that. That's a good cliche. Berlin to Boulder and then venues such as the Lincoln Center, the theater at the Ace Hotel, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Pretty awesome. The Grace Cathedral, which was probably amazing, the acoustics in there, and the National Arts Club. Um, so again, illustrious pedigree. Appreciate you being on the show. But as I always do on the Jay Campbell podcast, how did Murray, Murray Hittery, if I could even pronounce your name, get on the Jay Campbell podcast here today? Well, divine intervention it must be, Jay. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, since I started mind travel and putting out kind of my message through music and connecting to people individually and collectively through music, it's incredible the, the people that I've met through that, people that I may not have come into contact with, you know, in some other incarnation or chapter of my life and that's really been the gift of mind travel is the human connection and so you know with me and my team put kind of out there what what our message is looking for you know platforms and places that resonate with that and you know and you guys were really a, a match for that in terms of the exploration of consciousness which you know you do in your way through health and i do in my way through music and uh but ultimately i think we're all talking the same language we totally are. And you said the magic word, bro. You said incarnation. So this uh-huh. is really going to be an awesome podcast for absolute question without question. So let's talk about the things that you do. Um, obviously, you're an artist and a composer. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, again, I'm going off the beaten path, but your, your, your musical talents, like how did you gravitate towards music? And, and at what age did you know you wanted to be a musician? So I was lucky enough to be introduced to music um, when I was really young. I was about five years old when I had my first instrument placed in my hands. Uh, My parents were really keen on all their kids, there's five of us, I was the second, um, all of us playing music and having music in our lives. Um, And so cello was my first instrument at five, piano when I was six. And from that early of an age, I found music to be a very powerful of language for expression for me. I was a super shy kid, Um, you know, speaking and expressing myself verbally wasn't natural to me, wasn't easy for me to express my thoughts. I had a vast internal world, my imagination, my, you know, it was, it was a, it was a very deep inner world. And um, I just had a hard time expressing myself, but music allowed me to express myself um, in a whole new and very empowering way. And by the time I got to high school, uh, it was becoming more sophisticated. I was writing songs. I wrote the alma mater to our school. And That's awesome. It, it, yeah, and, and, um, and I knew that I wanted to be a composer um, at that point, uh, probably around 15 years old. And uh, eventually I formally studied in university to be a classical composer because, you know, it was about getting the tools to, to get what was in my head and in my heart kind of out on the page and into the instruments and then not just in terms of what I play, but for other musicians as well. That's awesome, man. Um, you know, I, I talk about all this. I talk about this in my various travels and in my various podcasts and interviews and stuff like that. But, you know, it's about conscious co-creation. And yeah. you knew 
probably within three or four months, you know, handed a, a cello at five or whatever that like, wow, you know, like I can play this and learn to play this and do this and I can help or actually excite other beings from my playing. And, and that's really the way the world works. Like, you know, are you creating, you know, or are you consuming? You know, I, I'm always getting into conversations with people today about like, as long as you wake up every day and you're actually creating a better world, it doesn't matter yeah. what you're doing, whether you're even sweeping a floor, yeah. And you're doing it with such, you know, gusto and panache and skill that you're, you know, the people that you're sweeping the floor for don't slip and fall, you know, or you're someone like you and you're, you know, composing classical music. I mean, it, 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 it's amazing how we all have a role to play, regardless of whether it is, you know, again, whether you're that CEO of a 500 billion, you know, or a million dollar company or you're a guy sweeping the floor, we all have a role to play and it's embracing that role. And it's being excited and being passionate, which you clearly are. Okay, so let's talk about um, mind travel. Um, how did it happen? You know, obviously you've been a musician, but how did mind travel come yeah. into your life? So music for me has always been a personal practice, kind of like the way people have, you know, meditation or other, you know, yoga, other consciousness uh, rituals or practices. Um, music is that for me. So right. I would sit at the piano every day and you know just express myself improvising at sure. the piano and over time you know i use that initially as a tool as a composer to find ideas right. um because like you said it's that creation it's creating space for flow in that creation and then it turned out that when i was done with these sessions i would feel incredibly calm refreshed balanced de-stressed i was like feeling great so i began to do it just to kind of uh, get the emotions out of me and just to kind of feel that, that um, the stress out. And when I got into the tech world in my 20s, I actually had a piano in my office. Um, and at the end of every crazy tech startup day, dealing with a million issues, a million fires to put out, I would sit at the piano and my whole staff, my whole team, they all knew like, where's Murray? Oh, it's, you know, it's uh, 8 p.m. He's like in his office playing the piano, chilling out, you know, and that but that's how that's what music was for me it was this ritual to just connect and eventually i fused that with my deep studies of eastern philosophies and buddhism i got to live in various monasteries around the world i traveled awesome. in asia for a year and just really steeped myself in in those traditions and uh, over time those those fused together so classical western music eastern philosophy, mystical ideas, meditation, etc., came together to create this experience that again was personal to me that I eventually called mind travel because I said, you know what, I see what it does for me, I wanna share this with others. And I was at a point in my life um, after you know building several tech companies, again, creating, every day waking up and creating something new, but I said, you know what, where's my legacy gonna lie? Is it gonna be as a tech entrepreneur well that's part of it i identify with part of that but it's not the full expression of who i am and so i knew that music was a way i could be of service and impact people on a much grander scale and like you were saying earlier when you wake up every day how what are you contributing to others how are you creating what are you creating that's of service to other people and making the world a better place one little step at a time and for me music really i, I felt that with music and then that's when I created Mind Travel, came up with the name of it, never had a name. It was just what I did. But I said, well, I'm taking people on this experience, immersive, transporting, and really moving people to purpose through music. That's really the key kind of mission of Mind Travel and what I'm up to with the music. It moves me to my purpose, connects me with my purpose, and hopefully it does that for those who are part of the experience as well. So awesome. And, you know, you speak the same language. I mean, I mean – so it's my, my, I don't even say belief. I say my knowing Yeah. Um, now that, you know, people like us are gravitating towards each other. You know, this energy that is hitting this planet, you know, from what I call the central spiritual sun is making people of like mind of conscious co-creation, desiring to serve others, to be loving, peaceful, forgiving, all those things, kind, conscious, kind, concerned, caring, all those things, um, it's unifying us. And that's again, why you and I are even having this podcast to, together today, yeah. because we both didn't know each other. You know, obviously your podcast producer, you know, knows my show and connected us, but 
I'm, you know, truthfully, Murray, I didn't tell you this, you know, off air, but like, I'm not really doing podcasts with anybody right now because my funnel is so full and I, you know, I have so many doctors and so many people want to be on my podcast and I usually turn people down. Yeah. But like, I saw your, you know, note sheet and, you know, talked about meditation and I just, I instantly knew, and I've, I've done this with like two other people recently that I should have said no to, but there was something about it. And I'm really glad that you and I are talking because we are yeah. speaking the same language. I got to do ask you though. Yeah. In your notes, it said you um, suffered a traumatic loss. Can you go into that? Yeah. And, um, you know, we all go through tough times in life. Uh, we all at some point deal with loss and grief of various kinds. It's, you know, a spectrum of experience. For me, the greatest loss of my life happened about uh, 13 years ago. I was traveling with my little sister. So I, I mentioned earlier, there's five of us in the family, five kids, five siblings. Uh, I'm the second and my sister was the youngest. Uh, at the time she was 23 um, and we were traveling, I was in my mid thirties. We were traveling overseas together in South Africa and uh, we were just having the most beautiful time out in nature and just really taking in this incredible country. Um, and there was just a horrific and sudden um, highway accident and she was killed instantly um, uh, in that moment. And I was there with her and, you know, had to go through that, experience that, um, and, you know, deal, deal with the aftermath of that. Um, so it was just the most devastating experience, you know, I had ever gone through and, and could have imagined. Um, not just the, the death of my sister, the loss of having her in my life, uh, but the trauma of what I dealt with going through that and of what I saw and experienced. Um, so there's a lot to unpack with that. There was a lot to get through. And, you know, I, of course, came back uh, to New York where my family is and we were all together and healing through that. My parents, my siblings, um, extended family. It was just so shocking. Um, and, you know, in addition to community coming together, family coming together, which is such a key element of healing, um, I also turned to music. And just like I described earlier, I would sit at the piano and in this case, there was a lot more to express. Um, the pain, uh, the grief. Um, we're talking about the kind of pain, the kind of grief that had really no words. So uh, even if I was eloquent at expressing myself through you know, verbal language, I don't think I would have had the words even then. Um, you know, they say that you know, when we lack the words, we turn to the poet. And when the poet lacks the words, uh, she turns to the musician. Uh, so, you know, music is that language. It's complex, it's sophisticated, and it's multi-layered. And when we're dealing with multi-layered emotional states, like grief, which are riddled with lots of other emotions all tangled up together, right. um, and that's what we're going through, it's a very challenging time. Uh, music helped me unravel, uh, unravel those, um, th those intertwined and intertangled emotions. And little by little, I was able to do that and feel my way through that grief and that pain um, until I came through the other side of it. And, you know, I really just played my way through that right. and uh, expressed it through music. And I saw how powerfully I was able to come through the other side, not just, not just what I was before, but opened up. It cracked me wide open in terms of my heart and, and um, my right. spirit in, in such a new way that it enabled me to do what I'm doing today, to connect with people on that level, people that are going through their own version of that uh, in whatever way that, that you know, happens for them. And so at my concerts and experiences, I'll have people come up to me afterwards or write into me afterwards expressing their story and how this music has helped them go through it. You, know, you don't have to be the one playing it. Uh, to have the impact, right. um, just listening to it and allowing the music to go through you and take you through that um, and allow the feelings to come up. Because, you know, as you know, we repress and we push down right. so much uh, into our subconscious even and into our bodies. Um, our physicality and our, our minds are, are interlinked. You can't separate one from the other. Uh, so what our hearts and minds go through, our bodies go through. Right. And, you know, I, I use the music as vibration to get through that and others do that as well. So once I saw the power of that, I said, I have to, I have to offer this publicly. And, and if someone's going through something even remotely similar um, and this can help them, then I want to be there for them. That's awesome, Murray. I mean, I'm, I'm listening here, you know, and somewhat aghast and, 
in shock and, and in horror for what happened. You know, I really want to ask questions, but you're you, I'm sure I can, and you've overcome it. But I mean, obviously you went through a traumatic event, the loss of your sister, your baby sister, who I'm sure you had an amazing relationship with, you know, I'm the oldest of nine children. Wow. I have five brothers and sisters and three girls. Mm -hmm. They're all still here. Although my first brother who was born before me died of SIDS, which not to get into a long conversation, but as they now know, or the smart guys know, SIDS is actually vaccine injury. Oh. They just, the, you know, the demons that run big pharma or, or medicine just created a, you know, disease category of sudden infant death syndrome, but it's actually a reaction to a vaccination. You die and 13% of you. I mean, I know everything there is now. I'm not going to go on a rabbit hole, but about your sister. Um, it's my belief. And again, I like to say it's a knowing that, what we're witnessing right now, and obviously this podcast is running on July 9th, 2020, and it will run this year, I promise. But, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about right now a gigantic collective dark night of the soul for humanity, right? COVID-19, whatever this is, without yeah. getting into a debate of it, you know, people are suffering greatly, many different ways. And it really is like the trauma of the situation and the environment that it causes and then people's reactions to it and stuff. So, you know, again, my knowing is, is that you have to integrate your trauma, which you did through your music, but all people have to learn to integrate their trauma. And when you can't integrate your trauma and it's not easy, you're not going to find it from allopathic medicine. Mm. Um, you're not going to find it from a garden variety psychiatrist. And again, that's allopathic medicine to me, but you, you know, you have to learn to integrate it and to accept it and to, forgive and detach from what happened to you, you know, through the conversations like you and I are having right now. And there's obviously other ways, you know, grounding in nature through meditation, through contemplation, there's other things, you know, you can have regression hypnosis. There's a lot of ways to do it, but it's incredibly important to integrate your trauma to really become the person that you became the person that I've become. I mean, I had to integrate my trauma. I've had dark nights of the soul. I attempted to kill myself. You know, so like I, 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 I've been where you're at and, 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 you know, credit to you um, that you were able to create mind travel and create this immersive experience, which we're going to talk more about, but it really is. And I want your feedback on this. I really think that right now, the key to this planet, this group of humanity, that our species right now reaching what I call planetary consciousness is through the integration of this collective trauma that we have all, you know, suffered or felt, you know, through, as you said, multiple incarnations, multiple life experiences, multiple traumas. And that's where we're at right now. And we really do stand on the precipice of, you know, either advancing or unraveling and rebooting. I mean, I really look at it, you know, we're this close. This country is so divided and so fractured right now. And so it's like, it really is what you're saying. It's about you know, the conscious integration of our trauma. So let me, before we go more into your, 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 your um, mind travel and talking about what you do for people, I want your thoughts on that. You know, I, um, in terms of what you said, it's very powerful because we're going through something so collective right now. In the past, a lot of these analogous experiences, whether they were other viruses, diseases, they were typically more localized. Right. Um, either localized ge geographically right. uh, to parts of the world, or they were localized to certain populations, certain communities. Right. So you know you had some localization to it, one way or the other. They weren't they weren't global and affecting literally every person. Right. right. Um, as well as other you know planetary traumas such as nine eleven or such as um, you know financial crisis of uh, two thousand eight two thousand nine. Sure. Sure. You know, they, yes, they were mega. They were big, you know, blasts, um, but they, they didn't affect the whole world in the way that this is now. Um, literally, you turn on the news and you see whatever country, you know, every population is dealing with this, you know, from the U.S. to Papua New Guinea. I mean, there's no, there's no hiding from it. I mean, right. it's everywhere right. from the South Pacific to the North Pole. I mean, it's right. just incredible. Yeah. Even the South Pole, the, the, um, the, uh, the station there uh, is, you know, they're impacted there. I mean, incredible. Right. Yeah. So there's something powerful about that to collectively go through this kind of trauma. And I think that as, as dark as it is, as troublesome as it is, as difficult and challenging as it is, I'm the kind of person that because of what I've gone through, and maybe you'll resonate with, with what you've been through, sure. 
if we're able to move through and like you said integrate that trauma there's such a light at the other side Absolutely. of it and that's what actually keeps me in a very optimistic state even right now yeah. with what's going on because we have to work through the crap to be able to get through to the other side both personally and collectively right. as humanity because the illusion and and this is i think the, the most direct um in terms of response to your question right to your sentiment this this illusion that we individually are separate from each other right 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 is the, the causation of the problem totally and the second we realize that we truly are all in this together not like some hallmark card not like some nice sentiment sure, sure. but truly we eat we all are each other right once we truly get that then we have the ability to evolve and expand to dimensions that we can't even fathom right but it's right. the illusion that we're separate which by the way starts subconsciously at our birth right, right. you're you're literally ripped from your mother and separated from your mother and now you're thrown into the world and you know you could barely breathe and you're i mean it's traumatizing talk about integrating trauma and then we think we're on our own the rest of our lives so we we have to reverse that conditioning and somehow move through that to realize the true union and connection that we all are beautiful beautiful i i 100 agree with you know the the issue or the problem if you're you know not um exposed to you know occurrences or, or incidents like you and i both were most people don't know how to to integrate it right because as you know the media you know the mainstream you know conditions this type of behavior it teaches people right now you know i have a 10 year old daughter a 12 year old daughter it teaches them that it's not their fault murray mm. it teaches them that personal accountability and self responsibility and rely and reliance is not what's important and so you have a giant culture of people unfortunately who want to vibrate as i call it vibrate in victimhood they mm -hmm. want to not be accountable and so yeah. you have to choose as a sovereign free empowered individual to become accountable and it's that's you know i again i struggle with this on a daily basis with my 10 year old my 12 year old's very like me and my wife but my 10 year old wants to blame everybody and she yeah. it's somebody else's fault and you know again and you know i want your comments and then we're going to talk about you know your experience in doing this because i want to talk about obviously mind travel and silent hikes but the, the problem becomes that they get reinforced from the screens yeah from social media from TikTok, from youtube from instagram from snapchat it's mind-blowing how divisive and distractive or i just made up a, that's don king i made up a, i like it i like that it's a good word right <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I, mean, I mean but it really these do cause such you know controversy such division from human beings learning the things that you and i have been talking about on this podcast which is again connectivity you know emotional control state control um, you know, being in power and again, being empowered and, and, and again, consciously co-creating that technology, you know, my buddy calls it the toxic tech, but it's like, the reality is, is like, that's why so many of our young people today, you know, if I can like, you know, make a point of all these people out there protesting and, you know, burning down things and defacing monuments and just standing for nothing. It's because again, this is my opinion, but they're vibrating in this victimhood that's reinforced by the, you know, whatever you want to call them, the media, the controllers, the, the structure, the matrix, whatever. And that's, that's the problem is like, how do those people, and I'm asking your opinion and your, and your answer now, but how do those people figure it out? So when we look at kind of our frame of the world, seeing it as externally driven that your state is driven externally by right. external circumstances right. right leads to that victim mentality right. um and then your state is you're at the mercy of the right. external world totally so that you know that um relinquishes agency right it nice. it uh it, it just uh, it gives away your power so if you want to live in an empowered state then you have to assume the mindset of radical responsibility. Oh, I love that. Um, even when you feel that someone 
absolutely unequivocally has wronged you. That's a, that's especially when you I'm have to get them back. Yeah. And now you've given them fully your power. You've fully given it over to them. And you're totally powerless and weak. Even though it seems you've convinced yourself that you're strong and empowered, but the opposite's actually true. Murray, that is such a profound statement, by the way. Radical responsibility. I'm stealing that from you, but at least I'm yeah. telling you I'm stealing it from you. <laughs> I mean, that's really the key because if, if our power comes from within, then no matter what is happening around us, it doesn't shift us. We exactly. maintain our mindset. We maintain our state and our calm. It's like the storm, you know, circling right. um, around us. And that's, that's the place I try to be at all times, Right, man. you know, is no matter what's going on, can I maintain my calm? Um, and it doesn't mean I'm ignoring it. It doesn't mean I'm not connected to it. Right. It just means it's not, a, it's not what's directing my life. Um, so, well, you know, when it comes to things like the news, yeah, I mean, of course, there's so much fear on the news. There's no question about that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not great. Um, can, we, can we take in the news enough to inform us and then, and then that's it, you know? Okay, I, I need to know what I need to know. Yeah, there's certain things, obviously, I need to know to function and survive and live in the world. I can't totally, you know, cut myself off, and I don't think we should do that. But there's enough we can take in. Um, without it becoming overwhelming to our lives. The idea is control what we can control, right? Exactly. And usually we can control what's in our immediate sphere of influence, right? Um, when we start to think we have control over things across the globe, right. that's when the stress, the anxiety spirals out of control. So we, we focus on what we can control, which is our sphere of influence, right? Our family, our friends, ourselves, right. our bodies, our minds, right? What we eat, where we live, like just the right. things that are in our control. And the moment we focus on that, we can reduce that fear of anxiety, of uncertainty, and, and just stay in that place. Um, the second we get outside of it and start to get influenced by things happening halfway around the world, um, we, we start to lose our power. Beautiful, man. I knew there was a reason I was bringing you on this podcast. <laughs> we only have control over our thoughts, our words, and our actions. That's yeah. literally it. Yes, we have a sphere of influence. And yes, we have our loved ones and our friends and family member and stuff. But we don't have control over any of them. We have control over our state of being. Yeah. And as long as your vibration is up here and... You know, you are focused on being high conscious, again, high vibrating, however you want to look at it, and aware. Um, I mean, everything you said is perfect, man. I, I, I really appreciate you coming on this podcast. I mean, it gives me really awesome energy to speak with people like you because it also gives me greater sense of hope that there are way more of us out there, but we're really the silent majority. And you and I are not silent, right? We're out there talking about this on a, on, on a, you know, a pretty high level. So it's cool that we today came together to vibrate this amazing podcast, which isn't yet done. So I want to, I want to talk about silent hikes, right? I mean, yep. you've done a lot of cool stuff. You've been on a show of the doctors. You're a real Holly weird, weirdo, bro. That's awesome, <laughs> by the way, that you've been on the doctors. Um, I did not click on the link, but now that I know you, I will. But talk about the silent hikes and, you know, how you're integrating these into yeah. your presentation around the world. So from the beginning, Jay, I wanted to create this immersive experience and sure. different versions of it, um, music being the common denominator. That's the foundation, right? They all involve music. So what first started in indoor spaces, theaters, right? And that, those are just beautiful, right? I could transform the theater into this beautiful, you know, transportive experience. You know, visuals on the screen. I'm playing the piano live. By the way, I'm improvising the whole time. So That's each awesome. time it's a different journey down the river, so to speak. Totally awesome. So that's where it started. And then I wanted to take people out into nature. So then I, I, I went to beaches like Santa Monica Beach and parks like Central Park in New York and these incredible iconic outdoor places where people can now be next to nature. Right. Because right. nature, as we know, is so healing, so powerful. Nature so connected. is God, Murray. Absolutely. It is the full expression. And so if I can now get people in nature and the music, I mean, just getting them to nature, half my work is done, right? So, <laughs> right. 
So now they're in nature, they're lying down, they're free, they're moving, they don't have to sit in a chair the whole time, they can walk around, and I, and I said, well, how, how are they going to hear the music? You know, they're, they're not going to hear a little piano, uh, you know, out in the field with so many hundreds of people, right. and I can't even get a, you know, a beautiful Steinway piano at the beach, it'll <laughs> ruin, uh, it's 600 pounds. <laughs> so what I did was I, I, I took my electric grand piano, and I connected it to wireless headphones, nice. which I would give to the whole audience. So you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people with wireless headphones Epic, listening, yeah. having their own intimate moment, and it's completely silent in the outside. If somebody were to walk by, they would hear nothing. They see a guy playing the piano, and they don't hear anything. That's because so it's awesome. an internal deep right. experience sure. and then people can walk around move around and have their moment both individually and collectively right as a group or individually and that's really the power like we talked about before kind of collapsing that notion of separation of of us and them right it's it's all of us together and that led to the silent hikes and the silent walks because i said okay this is so powerful nature and you know the music and community but what if we had brought movement into it and i love hiking personally i love oh, retreating into the mountains um, walking on the beach that's where i always go to contemplate to think about life to reflect and kind of find my own processing sure but i also like to hike with friends but not all the time jay do i like to chat with them for two hours straight and and you know bs about life i mean i'll do that for 20 minutes right, but then right, i want right, to right, kind right. of be in it you know of course and but i still want to be with them so the idea was Let's put headphones in everyone. Everyone's listening to the same thing at the same time, so we're not distracted in our own worlds. Right. Because at first you might be like, well, everyone's together, but they're in their headphones listening. Exactly. Aren't they disconnected? They're on but their actually, phones, they, texting. <laughs> right, but the opposite happens. Nobody's texting. Everyone's listening to the same thing. I, I guide it with my voice and the music. So it's like a narrative of moving through nature and, and connecting people with the present moment bringing awareness to every action they take, walking slowly and being present in your body and your mind. And um, we, we do these around the country. Um, I was on a 70 city tour with this experience before COVID hit. And, uh, you know, we have hundreds of people in each city show up walking through beautiful parks, waterfronts, mountains in each of these cities from Detroit to Memphis, New York to LA. I mean, it's just incredible. And it just connects people, strangers who don't know each other. At the right. end of this, we all get in a massive circle. One of them in one of the circles in Pittsburgh, I remember last uh, summer, uh, was took up the took up the size of a soccer field. That's, That's how awesome, large the, the circle was. And everyone feels this deep connection yeah. because of the common humanity of all of us. No matter what we all looked like moving around the circle, you had every color, race, religion, you name sure. it, was there, sure. and everyone just felt that communion that togetherness it was that's, it's really quite beautiful it's so beautiful yeah i mean we said the same words i mean i mean that you felt the unification of the soul because as you yeah. said we are all collectively one yeah. you know our souls are essentially like all holographic fragments of the source frequency slash god creative force whatever you want to call it yeah uh, yeah, it, it really it really transcended jay the the superficial differences we think we have exactly right? and you know yes of course all those are important parts of our identity and culture and all that. But under it, there's something even more powerful, I think. Well, I w you know, it's not a thinking. It's true. I mean, you know, whenever you speak to a person of your consciousness level or my consciousness level, we always resonate coherently with the same frequency, which is exactly what you said that, you know, together we are all one, you know, it's, 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 you know, the unity of us as spirit beings is far greater than the physical manifestation of, Murray or Jay or yeah. a black person or a white person or a Hispanic person or an Asian person. I mean, it's all nonsense. I mean, not to disrespect, but it's deeperly deeper. We are nothing more than vibrating electrons inhabiting a physical body yeah. and inhabiting a physical experience. Right. And so it's like when you can see things from that true perspective and not be attached to, you know, this physical manifestation or incarnation or whatever we are in a body and, you know, embodiment and, and, and just you realize from a greater perspective of a whole that we are all connected, you're, you're going to be in more control of your state. You're going to be less likely to be reactive and to, you know, do all the silly things that we see. And again, you know, to not to beat a dead horse, but it's my opinion that, you know, you have to check out. 
you have to not be on screens or watching television or watching Netflix or, you know, playing video games or doing all these things that pull you into that vibration of separation. Yeah. Because separation, as you said, very well and eloquently, I may add, is what keeps us from truly becoming unified yeah. as a species. And again, to me, you're, what you're doing is amazing because you're literally, you have the power in your own hands through, you know, through the immersive experience of, you know, wireless headphones um, to create this amazing unification through music and through sound and through harmonics and stuff. And it's just, it's beautiful, dude. Like I'm so, when this podcast ends, I'm going to check out your thing tonight. And, you know, actually my, one of my daughters gets back tonight because she's been with her ex, my, my ex with her mom. And we're going to, we're going to do this tonight. So would you recommend I go to the silent hike video that you sent me on YouTube or is there something better? Yeah, there's, um, I mean, I mean, I'll send you a direct link, but on the website, mindtravel.com, if anybody puts in, if any of your listeners put it in their email, they'll get a free uh, silent hike recording, yes. about a 20 minute version. So it's a, it's a manageable amount of time. Go for a 20 minute yeah, walk absolutely. and, and all you got to do is listen. If they, and then if people want to go deeper, there's a 30 and 60 minute version that go even deeper into our emotional and spiritual states and nice. our consciousness level. And that's, you know, if people want to go deeper, that's available there as well. There's also music for sleep uh, because a lot of us have trouble getting to sleep, staying asleep. So I created these recordings that are both guided and music that really help us induce that state of rest and relaxation. Uh, there's meditation music, all kinds of music, music to focus to at work while you're cranking away, writing, reading, thinking, brainstorming, whatever you're doing. There's music to keep you and hold you in that space. Tons of students use it while they're studying uh, because, you know, typical music actually becomes too distracting if it's too melodic and, right. you know, and, and um, uh, this music kind of puts you in that zone, that flow, that trance state to really open up the brain for learning. Um, so, yeah, all that's on the mindtravel.com site. Beautiful. I want to just follow up what you just said earlier, Jay, Please. which I, I really liked. And, you know, we, you know, we talk about, um, you know, treat your neighbor um, like yourself, right? We, we have that, you know, beautiful saying in society. Um, but what if we were to take it a step further, right? And say, treat your neighbor, not just like yourself, but treat your neighbor as yourself because they truly are you. Right. Uh, it's that notion that even your neighbor is separate from you, right? Like we, if we collapse that and say, I'm going to treat someone not the way I would want to be treated, but literally treat them like I'm treating myself. I mean, as myself, it's, right. that's actually what's happening. Um, and the moment we really go that deeper shift, our, our consciousness just overwhelms and expands. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree with you, man. I mean, it's funny, right? We're at 44 minutes and 32 seconds. So we're really literally, cause I think you and I talked for about three and a half minutes before we went live. Um, or actually no, four and a half minutes. Cause I went to the bathroom. <laughs> um, but I mean, again, it's like I told you, like you're, this has been phenomenal. I mean, there hasn't been anything that you've said that I did not completely resonate with. Um, you know, you're making, you're, no, I mean, seriously, you're making a huge difference in the world. Um, if my audience, you know, who will be enthralled with, with this podcast and this conversation wants to work with you, wants to deeper connect with you. I mean, obviously we want them to go to mindtravel.com, but is there any other way that they can interface with you? Well, yeah, they could, uh, they could write to me through the uh, website. I read every email that comes in and awesome. as my team does. Um, I also am on Instagram um, and Facebook. And so I'm very active on Instagram and they could uh, direct message me there um, or just follow me there to see what, you know, we're up to the latest and greatest. Okay. Awesome. So guys, please, uh, as always, please support the amazing fine people that come on the show. You can find Murray on Instagram. It's Instagram.com Murray. Hidry, which is H-I-D-A-R-Y. And then of course, go to his website, which is www.mindtravel.com. Make sure you give him your email so that you can get their 20 minute initiatory um, silent hike. And, um, you know, as you said already, I'm already dialing it in right now in my mind for you guys that are like the conscious, you know, the high conscious focused folks, there's all sorts of amazing stuff on there that you can go deeper, as he said, 30 and 60 minute videos. So, um, brother, I really appreciate you coming on the show today, man. I definitely look forward to meeting you and breaking bread with you in real life. We're in the same city. We should absolutely yeah. do that very, very soon. Uh, wait, wait one second so I can talk to you before the show ends. But everybody remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.